Yeah, praise the Lord. Give him glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Uh, glory. Where's uh, Cody? Come up here and share what you just said. He, he took the long way around. You could have come down the middle aisle. Praise the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. So we had a prayer meeting yesterday. And uh, Cody, he's starting to, he's really starting to get encounters. We had a really sweet presence coming here yesterday. And um, we just caught up. And so he had an encounter that I think is very befitting on what I want to share with you tonight. So, glory to God. And um, I was in prayer, just kind of soaking in the presence. And as we were entering in, it was a really dark room. But an angel of the Lord appeared, and he waved a golden staff over the body and then I saw all the candlesticks light on fire so he said get ready because he's about to light the candlesticks yeah. so he kind of walked up and shared that with me in the service if you've heard our series on the golden lampstand you'll really understand the significance of that encounter and that vision if you haven't heard our series on the golden lampstand I encourage you to listen to it. It's on the righthandofgod.com. It's free, so if you don't like it, you can get your money back. Hallelujah. And I would, I mean, it is so now prophetic right now. It's, you, if you take that whole series with the revelations in Psalm 37 right now, there is so much happening on the world scene that the word describes in intimate detail what's going on, where we are, what's about to happen. Amen? It's awesome. I'm loving it. So I'm in prayer today, and I'm, I'm really in there with the Lord today. And he said, I want to show you the Father. I'm like, well, we've been doing that for the last year. And he said, yes, but I've only showed you one aspect of the Father. I'm like, oh. And now, go before I get into that, go to John 16. He, he, he was explaining to me his role here. He says, I am the one that reveals the Father to you. I reveal different parts of the Father in according to what you need. He goes, I revealed the Father's love to you for a whole year because I... You know, at 40-something years old, still had an orphan spirit. You can have an orphan soul and be 90 years old. Amen? And until that is changed, you'll act like an orphan, talk like an orphan, react like an orphan, think like an orphan. Amen? Fatherless. But when the Father's love, when you're exposed and your heart, your soul, your spirit is exposed to the Father's love, especially the way the Lord reveals him in, in the depths of his love, then it has an impact to transform and change in a way that's just awesome. We've all seen this change. Many of you are being changed yourself. And so that comes, you can receive the Father's love by visitation, but you can't receive continuously like that. you got to go to where he is. Amen? That's not the message tonight. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on that. John 16, verse 25, um, upper room mysteries, amen, still in the upper room. These things I have spoken unto you in hidden sayings or in mysteries or in proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak to you in proverbs. I won't even, he's telling, they're in the upper room. He's telling this. He goes, I'm not going to be here to give you these words. My ministry's changing. I'm not going to be with you. I'm going away. He says, when I go away, the time cometh that I'm not going to be speaking to you, but my ministry is changing now to becoming the great high priest, the mediator, the intercessor where he ever liveth at the right hand of God to make intercession for us. He's our mediator, the reconciler. See, he's, he's moving up into the Father to receive us, to begin our introduction to the Father, amen, to make the way. 
through salvation and then create the pathway and then begin the role of the mediator, the intercessor, the high priest, and reconciler, the reconciliation to the Father, to bring us to the Father. So he says, I'm not going to be here, but the time cometh, I will n- I'm not going to speak to you this way. I'm giving my words to the Holy Spirit. My Holy Spirit's going to take the, he's taking over the administration of my words, and I'm moving to a new administration. That's what he's telling them. But notice what he says about his new administration. He says, but I shall, he goes, I'll no longer speak to you in Proverbs. I'm going away. He's constantly telling them in the upper room, I'm going away. But I'm going to show you, openly reveal to you plainly of the Father. I'm moving to show you the Father. My ministry is to reveal the Father. Amen? Holy Spirit's taking my charge in the earth. He's taking over my words for the administration of my words, and I'm moving to the Father to move my new ministry is to reveal the Father to you. Amen? To openly show you the Father whom you say you know. There was that whole generation thought they knew him, and none of them. He goes, I'm with you. He says, if you had known me, you should have known the Father because he's the one telling me what to say to you. He's with me. He's the one doing the works. I'm not doing the works. He constantly said, the son can do nothing. But what he seeth the father doeth. He goes, it's the father that's doing these works among you. The one you say you know, but you're rejecting both him and me. Because you don't know him. But I'm coming. And I'm going to make a way for not only to know him, but to dwell with him. Amen. So we know that. So go, go to chapter 16. I'm setting it up. Praise the Lord. Go to 17, chapter 17. Because I'm going to tell you what I'm feeling about this. This is very fresh. I, I was deciding whether I should even release this today or not. What he started sharing with me, I, because it's, it's just day one of this. But I have the feeling what he's saying today, what he's saying is just as powerful as today he opened that whole realm of his love where he is in the Father and opened that. It's that powerful. And we're in day one. And I'm pretty excited about it. So he's talking to me about this. He goes, I want to show you the Father today. And I'm, I said, I, I thought that's what we've been doing. He said, yes, I've shown you the Father's love. I've shown you aspects of his love. And he, and he told me, very. he goes, you'll be learning about his love for all eternity. And you always have access to it. That's what he would said to me today. He goes, you always have access, but there's something else that you need. Just like your fatherless soul needed his love there's something you need right now and it's coming from the father i should just close the service and come back on on sunday come back on sunday praise god because i've got an expectation right now amen i can hear you what is it come on so verse 22 in in uh, verse 24 um, in 17, verse 24, his final will before the cross, his final prayer, he says this, Father, will they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold, say behold, my glory that you've given me. For you've loved me from the foundation of the world. He wanted, he goes, I will they now be with me where I'm, I'm coming back to where you are, Father. And I pray they all be with me where I am in you so I can show you to them. They can, they can behold the glory I've had. And what he was saying, he goes, there's many aspects of the Father I want to reveal to you. Now, I have to back up. Uh, it wasn't this Sunday. I think it was, it was last Wednesday or last Sunday? I'm not really good at these kind of dates like you guys are. Some of these people can just give the date and time. You know, not back in 1966 at 6.30 in the morning on a Monday night. God's, I'm like, I can't do that. I can generally get the year right, you know. I can get the season down for sure. But I remember laying down here. When's that last time I laid down here for two hours? Was that Sunday morning? Yeah, Sunday before that. Yeah, yeah, I laid down there. And a spirit of God, I must have probably, I think we were at the end of the service or something. Yeah, very powerful. Oh, the dancing service. Yeah, that's one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I lay down there, 
and and the spirit of God was so heavy, and I got I caught up to the same place I was caught up with the Lord today. I was caught up with Him, and He was like speaking to me almost face to face, and He said, He said, everything that you want. Your future and your desire is all in the Father. He said, everything you're looking for is in the Father. It'll do you no good to back up and go to the right, left. He goes, you have to go into the Father to find out what's in the future. He goes, there's nowhere else to look is what he was telling me. He goes, you can't even back up to your anointing. Listen, I have an anointing that I could just minister in. But it will never produce what's coming. Does that make sense to anybody? I can fall back. There's a lot of ministers that get on easy street and they just fall back. They, do, they just live the way they want to and walk up and just, just get up in the, in, the, in the ministry. And whatever anointing they got, it flows. And they live off of it. And some of them live very well off of it. And they don't want to change any of it. Amen? Because once they hit the good life, they're not changing nothing. The people, oh, God, God's had me go to pray for them. I told them, I said, and God's going to shift and bring revival. I said, not in your best day. There's some places they're not going to shift. You might as well just get used to that. They have it set. They like it the way it is. They don't want to change it. And God's not going to make them change it. If you think God's going to come in and make anybody change anything, he doesn't do that. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyway, I was laying there, and he said, all that you want, all that you desire is in the Father. Anything less, you'll not find. And he was telling me, you've got to go in to find what you're looking for. So I'm back in that place today. And he says, I want to show you the Father. I'm like, and as I said, I thought, I thought that's what we've been doing. Because I'm, I'm going to my go-to place, to the love of the Father. And he says, that's always there for you, but I have something else. That you, he said this to me, and everyone else needs at this moment. Now, what does the Bible say first about, there's a couple of ways that God, the Father is described. The first thing is, the Bible says, God, what, is, what, love. What else does it say? There's not very many, God is. God is love. God is light. He said, I want you to begin to understand the light of life that can only come from the Father. He goes, you preach it. He goes, you, we all have the generic revelation in terms that we, yeah, I walk in the light. But he says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, walk in the light, what does that mean? It's he is in the light. If you walk where Christ is, you dwell with him in the Father See, he dwells in the light if you dwell with him in the Father. You see that? He's, now, when God started this journey with me, with the love, it's the same way he launched me to the love. He started showing me the Father's love because I want to reveal the Father to you. I want to take you into the Father, and I want to share with you what I have with the Father. That's how he launched that back in 2016 in October. I got that right. Praise God. Hallelujah. I got the month right. Hallelujah. It was around the 12th. I'm getting some light. Praise the Lord. That's what he's doing now. He's doing that with light now. What, where he was doing it, he goes, God is what? Love. But he also is light. And he told me this. And I'm telling you, I'm real new at this right now. But I'm about to go explore and praise God. Because when he opens that door, I mean, that's like putting a steak in front of me. And I hadn't eaten in three days. I am going to go Tyrannosaurus Rex on that. Praise God. Because he opened the door. As soon as he opened the door, it's mine. Amen. I wasn't looking to go into the Father and find light. I was looking to find love. And he says, I'm the ministrator, not me, him. He goes, I choose to show you what aspects of the Father that you need. And he goes, you need now the light. He goes, and it's the light that I walked in in the earth. He goes, I didn't walk in darkness. I walked in light. I knew everything about every situation. God, I mean, the Lord Jesus could answer your question before they even brought it to them. 
I mean, they would come with questions, and he already knew what was in their heart. He already knew what they asked. And many times he'd finished their sentence before they could even say it. He already knew what they were going to say. He knew traps were being laid for him. Like the Lazarus thing, they wait, he waited two days, you remember? And Martha got all mad. He goes, you would have come when we told you he wouldn't have died, but you waited two days. He, and the Jews had sought to kill him. He knew it was a trap. But he saw everything because he walked in this light that was not of this world. And they began to say, you don't understand this light as you're going to understand it. But it's prefacing the golden lampstand. He goes, what is the golden lampstand first and foremost? And those of you that have not heard that series won't understand the fullness of what that is. It's God's final testimony to mankind. Three phases, one with the church. And then it passes the baton to the two witnesses, and then they pass it to the 144,000. It's God's final witness. It carries three major phases of light. Say light. What is the golden lampstand more than anything? It's light. Say light. It's a light that God has reserved for the last days. Amen. Glory to God. What's the first thing God did when he created the earth? It was thou form and thou form, and darkness filled the earth. And he said, what? Let there be what? Light. It was the very first of his creation, and he'll end with light. He began with light. He's going to end with light. He has a lampstand that this world and his body has not seen yet. It's a light that's different than what we're walking in right now. Right now we go to church, we pray. That light's going to cause us to see in ways we've never seen. It's going to cause us to understand in ways we've never understood. It's going to cause us to move in dimensions we've never moved in before. It's a light that can see in front, behind, to the right, to the left. It's a circumference of revelation and light that understands it's God's intelligence given to his heirs. It's a God kind of intelligence that manifests itself in wisdom, understanding, illumination, sight. To where nothing will surprise you. And to where you'll cease from stumbling. Not one time ever did you ever see the Lord stumble at anything. He never stumbled with his words. He never stumbled with his actions. He never stumbled in reaction to anything, anyone. He always knew what was going to happen before it happened. Well, that's the Lord. That's him and that's you. That's the mantle that he has promised to give us. And he attributed that mantle to the Father dwelling in him. And the Father is what? Love and light. He said, it won't be complete until you know both, is what he told me. He's explaining all this to me in this place I was with him today. He said, tell him, tell him what I'm telling you. He goes, you'll be incomplete without light. That's why you continue to stumble even with all the revelation that you have. You continue to make mistakes because you haven't accessed the kind of light that I walked in. It's a light, listen to this, that doesn't make mistakes. Because you see, say you see, ooh, ooh, isn't that good? Oh, amen. That's good stuff. Hallelujah. Go to 1 John 1, verse 5. I'm just going to go through a few of these things he gave me. Because, again, I'm only first day into this. <laughs> but he opened the door. And he said, this is the prequalification of the lampstand. Because I'm going to light my lamp and my people. What do you think that lamp is? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting revelations. What he's, he said, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to light you up. And then it's going to light the world. And he goes, and the first thing it's going to do, it's going to light your darkness and chase it away. He said something to me it was so remarkable. He says, you can encounter the love of the Father and still walk in areas that you shouldn't be walking in. But when you encounter light, light chases it all away. You cannot walk in light and darkness. They are diametrically opposed to one another. If you have light, 
you cannot have darkness. There is, there's no dark you can see in here because there's light. If I turn these lights out, you can't have both. One lampstand will light this whole room up. One lamp. Say one lamp. And he told me, he says, he goes, it's not the kind of light that you know in the way you've been taught. It's the kind of light that can only, he told me this so specifically. He, he said, just as you found this love in the Father and you experienced that, he goes, there's a light that you now must be exposed to that can only be found in the Father. This word, you can find light in the Word, but then there's another light in the Father. Amen? They can only be found in the... You can find love of the Father in a service, but then there's another love you find in Him. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Are you breathing tonight? You can have light given to you from revelation, but then there's another light, an operation of light. Amen? The Lord doth enlighten my darkness. Hallelujah. Ooh. So he started rolling some of these scriptures to me. I'm like, God, I'm not really ready to minister this. He says, you're ready. Just jump in. He didn't say it like that. He spoke it like I would say. He goes, jump in. Amen. If this is how he's going to clean his church up. These two powerful forces of the Father's love and the Father's light. It's the culmination. See, love is the foundation of the, of the lampstand. Light is the function. Amen? God's final lamp is going to be full of light. Why do you say keep the oil in your lamps burning? Because without that oil, you're not going to have light. Amen? All right. Verse 5, 1 John. This then is, 1 John, verse 1, verse 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. Amen. I'm a little rusty. I was out of pocket for a service. This then is the message which we've heard of him and declare to you that God is light. He is light. Amen. So this is what he told me. He said, if the Father is going to dwell in you the way he dwelled in me, there's two things that have to be there for him to occupy, love and light. God the Father does not dwell in darkness. Amen. For the Father's ministry to come into the earth in fullness, it's going to require the Father dwells in us in love and he dwells in us in light. That means there's no darkness. That's how he's going to clear it out, light. Everyone say light, but not the kind of light that you think or you've been exposed to because this light has been, is only found in the Father. That's what he kept telling me. He goes, oh, I'll get there. Amen. Every good gift, every perfect gift coming down from the what? The Father of lights in whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He's got a lot of operation of light. He calls it Father of, he's the Father of Lights. L-I-G-H-T-Z, if you're from Texas. Lights. I don't know, check me on my spelling, but I like to spell it L-I-G-H-T-Z. Lights. A. Lights. L I. T-H-S, Father of Lights. Say he's the Father of Lights. He's the Father of Love to take you from an orphan spirit to a son and to a son of full age, joint heir in love, but he's the Father of Light when it comes to your function and your operations in the earth. What we need to keep us from stumbling is light. How would you like to wake up and have your whole day in front of you already seen? Having every trap the enemy has planted seen. When someone walks up and they look like your new best friend, but they're a sheep, they're a wolf in sheep's clothing, and you see right past it. 
Now, you can see with certain discernment. I mean, Christine's got amazing discernment. I mean, certain people just get a certain, they got a, they, they're, just, they're black and white. There's really no middle ground. Well, the ones are like that, they just got discernment, and they just, they call it like it is, you know. Praise God. I don't see all the time everything. A lot of times, I, I can get suckered into things, and I don't see the way I need to see. Amen. I can see in his word amazingly. I have this gift to go into his word. The Lord give, gave me and he can take that lamp and I can go through his word and he can reveal and extract mysteries with that lamp and all that. And I can look at the mysteries and like, but I can't always just live in the breaking of mysteries. Those mysteries have to become flesh and dwell. The mystery of the golden lampstand has to come into reality. And he has to light the lamp into the earth. Amen. And the father he told me, I couldn't believe he said, he goes, the Father's going to light that lampstand. That's what he said, what you're looking for. The Father's going to light that. You're going to find it in the Father. Oh, say God is light. Mm. Pretty good, huh? See, I could have preached this before this. It had no meaning whatsoever. But because I was in an encounter with him, he's sharing that with me. It's got a weight to it. Because he's ready to introduce us to our calling into the earth. He's about to light the lampstands. Amen. And it's coming from the Father. I would not have even thought that before. He says, God is light. And in him, in him, say in him, is no darkness at all. Say at all. He says, you dwell with him in love. You can have your darkness and dwell with him in love. But when you dwell with him in light, what does light begin to do? Remove all the darkness. Say remove all. Think about this heavenly flashlight that goes down through your soul, your mind, your heart, and starts doing this, just shining this light down through there like this, shining it down. And everywhere that light shines, the darkness lifts and flees away. Think of the power of that operation and what it could do for us. See, again, here is our dilemma. We're thinking God's going to throw all this down to us. Everything I find out about God is we got to go up into the father what he says i will you be with me that you may behold the glory of my father he goes i've got many things i want to show you the father that's why he says stop wasting your time being distracted get back in and start beholding the father because your future is in the beholding of the father so your future is in the beholding Oh, the Father, I was so caught up. I, like, oh, I don't want to leave here. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. And first the day, he was just sharing with me that was the next level. This is where we're going. And I am so excited because I could see lampstand, lampstand, lampstand. He wants to light this word we've been carrying for 30 years. He made me to know if you as we go into the Father, we're going to light this. Oh, yes. Amen. First, go, go to uh, Colossians 1, 12. Then again, he, he spoke to me and he says, I started my first operation with light and I will end with the greatest light humanity has ever seen in the most darkest time of humanity. It'll go brighter and brighter and brighter as the world gets darker, darker, darker. If you don't read the Bible through God's witness system, you're going to see fear and not testimony. If you see what God's doing, you're, you're positioning from a, with him and looking at the way he's going to end. Amen? And it's going to be glorious. Praise God, especially for the church. Before he takes his church out, whew, Without spot, without wrinkle. How do you think he's going to get us there? Light. Love of the Father. Light. The final ministry in the earth is the Father's ministry. How's that? How can we have darkness and have the Father dwell? He cannot dwell in darkness. He doesn't dwell. We have to go. Why do we have to go? We go into the light to remove all the darkness. We come back 
with the Father. Amen. He's my Father and I will dwell with you in the earth. Amen. Say amen. amen. Praise God forever. Okay, what at Colossians 1? You there? Okay, I'll get there. I'm pretty excited about this because I was seeing some amazing things. Whew. 1 and 12. Uh, so he says, he's praying a prayer here in verse 11. He says, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power and unto all patience and long suffering." Kind of wish he had let those two things off. And joyfulness, the patience and the long suffering thing. But, you know, you're coming to find out you got to have it. To walk in his way, you got to have patience and the rest of God. Um, and then watch this. Giving thanks unto the Father, verse 12, which hath made us meet, which has made us qualified, qualified, say qualified. Who are you giving thanks to? Father. Who qualified you? Father. To be partakers of what? Of the inheritance. Where? Of the saints. Where? In the world system. Where is the inheritance? In the light. In the Father. Isn't that awesome? We partake of what inheritance? All the inheritance is in what? The light. God is light. You have to dwell in light to partake of the inheritance. Isn't that awesome? I am a partaker of the inheritance in the Father, in the Father's light. Amen? Light is the joint heirs principle operation if you don't have power you can have power and without light you'll lose it the enemy is too skillful what he does see the lord not only possessed the power of the father but he possessed the light of the father because he walked in a light he says and he promised he says you will have the light of life i'm coming to give you what i'm walking in it comes from the father Ooh. Go to John 8, verse 2. This is good. I can't wake up. I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning to go to the Father. I'm back. Amen. When you have that, it's how you know you got it. How you know if you got it? You can't wait to wake up to get in there. If you don't have that, you don't have it. You got to. You have to have the anticipation the night before. That's being connected. That is, you, you, you that's having expectancy. I'm going to encounter the Father. It's light. I already know the Lord wants to show him to me because I'm going to go to the Lord. And I said, show me the Father's light. Show me the light of the Father. Show me the Father of lights. That is my new prayer. Praise God. Show me the Father of lights. Show me the light. Because I got to go in. Amen. We got to go in. I don't care what darkness, because the light's going to chase it all away. Amen. Whew. One thing that darkness cannot stand in, and that is light. Darkness cannot stand where light is. The greatest weaponry against darkness is light. Amen. So, John 8, verse 2, are you there? I'm not yet. You're good. Did I say 2? Oh, 12, I think. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's much better. Praise God. Then I did all this during worship. I pulled all these scriptures. He was rolling them through me today, and I was so wiped out from that encounter. I just didn't even have time to put it together. I didn't even know if it was going to minister, to be honest with you. So then, verse 12, this page, Jesus again of them saying, I am the light. Say, the light of the world. There is a light, the God, that's coming from the Father, what? Of lights, and it's a gift. Why did he say every good gift, every perfect gift, 
coming down from above, the father what? Of lights. If it didn't have to do with an operation of light. It would be a gift to walk up and understand your day before you go out there. It would be a gift to understand what's going to happen before it happens. Wouldn't it be a gift to be in front of something instead of behind it? Hey, look, I've learned to survive like you have. I've taken some knocks like you've taken. But every single thing the Lord went through, he knew it was going to happen before it happened. Every time something happened, he knew it was going to happen before it happened. Nothing caught him by surprise. And he was telling me all of this operation, all of it, was because he walked in this light. He goes, the light that you think that you know, just like you thought you knew the love of the Father until I revealed him to you. He goes, you walk in a measure of light, but nothing like what I'm going to give you and my people in the last days. Isn't that glorious? But more importantly, he's telling me where it's found. He wasn't just saying, oh, I'm going to give you this, you know, pray for and wait on it. He told me where it's at. He said, it's in the Father, the Father of light. That's where you're going to get it. Amen? Oh, I don't know about you, but this kind of stuff just, just man, it just turns me up. Praise God. I was waiting on the, all right, what's next, God? I'm like, this is it. And then I see the gold lampstand. I'm like, this is that. This is that. Light my lampstand. See, I'm coming with him with a lamp. I already have that lamp in my heart. You have that lamp. Light my lamp. When I get in the presence of the Father, light this lamp. Light this lamp. I, I don't know why we didn't see it before. I carry a lampstand around for 30 years and don't know that it's light. Say it's light. Praise the Lord. John 8, 12, did we get there yet? We're in there. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in, what? Darkness. You know, people stumble. Even they know the Lord. Can't hear him. Don't know what he's saying. Where are you at, God? Why is this happening? Just take that person and compare it to this one that he says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me, you will not walk in darkness. But you shall have what? The light of life. You'll have what I have. I'm like, whoa. Whoa. All right. So I'm going to close. I'm going to give you two more scriptures he gave me. And I'm going to reopen this on Sunday morning. And I'll know I'll have something else. Amen. Whew. All right. So John 5. Now I want you to see. So he shifted. Because I want you to see how the Father and I operated together in the earth. Because he's constantly asking him, can you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father's in me and He's doing these works. It's the Father that's speaking to you. I don't speak my own doctrine. I'm speaking what He gave me to speak. I'm giving you the words that He gave me. I'm giving you His doctrine. He, he said it in John. My doctrine's not mine. It's my Father's. That's with me. That's in me. He fought out and just spoke to Philip. When Philip said, show us the Father, it'll suffice us. And the Father spoke to the Lord. He said, have I not been with you all this time? You've not known me, Philip. The Father spoke right through him. They are quiet in this Presbyterian church tonight. I'm happy. When I'm in this place, it, don't, it doesn't matter. You, know, that's all. you, you get to an, an atmosphere all of your own. Hallelujah. You could have witches back there, the, you know, on the... They could be out there doing whatever they do. It wouldn't even affect you because you're just in there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not a very good analogy, but anyway. Then answered Jesus, said unto them, verse 19, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
The son can do nothing but what he what sees the father doing. So he sees whatsoever things he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. Now I'm going to read that again to you. I want you to listen to this very carefully. Very, very, I say to you, the Son can do nothing. It's verse 19, John 5. The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, the Father, what so things the Father doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Did you get that? The Father plays out the entire scenario inside of him before it happens. He plays out the entire scenario. He tells him where to go, what to do, how to do it. All this is done inside through this operation of light. He's watching the whole thing like in a panoramic vision, watching the Father doing, and then he goes and does what he's seen inside the Father doing. That is the kind of light we're talking about. Isn't that awesome? We've all had that where God will show us to do something, but he had it every day. He had the continual light. Amen? Not this a little bit. He walked in a continuous operation of light where the Father, from the time he woke up, time he went to bed, constantly showed him what to do, who to talk to, what to say, who to administrate healing to, always knowing, seeing it before it happened. He showed me all this today. He said, that came from the Father dwelling in me in light. That's what I want to give you and my end time army. I'm like, whoa! I mean, he was like, whoa! He goes, that is what the lampstand's going to do. Isn't that awesome? He goes, there is no darkness, he told me, that the lampstand cannot look into. Listen, the world wakes up. They don't know they're in darkness. The body of Christ wakes up and thinks they're in the light, but then they stumble all the time because they don't know what they're stumbling at. But God has a light that can look into any aspect. What if God wants to look into the markets and puts his lampstand right in the middle of the markets? Oh, here's what's going to happen all this year, all this week. This is what's going to happen right here. Amen. What if he takes his lampstand and lets you look into a man's heart? He's not going to do that if you don't have love. Because you're going to judge him. What he says, the son judges no man. He goes, I didn't come to judge you. I come to save you. He goes, I'm not going to judge you at the end. My words are going to judge you. Because I didn't come to judge. I came to save. I'm not judging you. Even he says, if you reject the words I give you, I didn't come to judge you. But what if he takes the lamp and shines it right in there and looks all around Pastor Chuck's heart? Oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, looking pretty good there, son. Oh, dang. Sozo. Beep, 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 beep. Sozo. Sozo. Beep, 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 beep. Sozo. Sozo. Oh, man, Sozo. Mm, moving right along. <laughs> Love, faithfulness, loyalty. Ah, oh, praise God. What if he gave you that light when you sit in front of somebody and you see man's heart? You see everything about him. That's what he had. He could sit in front of somebody and know everything about them, but he didn't judge them. Talking about, that's, that's a prophet on steroids there. I'm talking serious. That is serious prophetic. Amen. Now, I love this because he showed me this. Look at verse 20. God, it's powerful. You can read John. You can see all. If you want to see the relationship between the Lord and the Father, the book of John captures that. The other writers capture the Holy Spirit that anointed the Lord. But if you want to see the Father doing it in that relationship, you got to read John because it's there. 
John's all about the Father and the Lord working together. The John caught all that. No other writer caught it like him. Verse 20. For the Father, what? Loveth. Say, loveth. Tim, I love you, brother. I didn't see Sozo, brother. I, I was just kidding. But if you were convicted, you can go see Pastor It's just too easy about Target. <laughs> Sharon's just thankful I didn't get over there. I was like, <laughs> verse 20. I've got a new lamp. Verse 20. For the Father loveth the Son. And what? Showeth. Say, showeth. All things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. And you take those two verses and read and meditate. The son can do nothing himself, but what he sees the father do it. Whatsoever he doeth, the son will do, for the father showeth the son all things that he's doing. And he said, he goes, I didn't send myself. My father sent me, and he shows me what to say, shows me what to do. I mean, nobody sees Jesus in this light. They all just saw him as Jesus, son of God. But they didn't realize he was 1,000% submitted to the father, surrendered to the father, 1,000% dependent on the father. He didn't do anything without the father. He didn't say anything without the father. He moved, did not move without the father. And he said, I only do those things that please him, and I only do what he shows me. Now, if you don't have that operation, you're sitting around, well, I'm not going to do anything until God shows it to me. You'll be sitting down here for a long time. You've got to have that operation if you're going to act like that. Amen? But that's what the lampstand's going to do in the last days. That's what's going to happen when God lights his lampstand. He's not going to leave you with power and wealth without a light to go with it. That's how he's going to get the job done. Imagine the church walking in this kind of light where it's not just Jesus, but it's thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of joint heirs with Christ operating just like he did. And imagine the world rejecting them, rejecting him under that kind of testimony. That's going to happen. There's many are not going to reject. Many are going to get saved. The age of mercy and grace will end with his church. Before the tribulation begins, when the church is lifted out, even then God will take that light. Even though it will be judgment, more people will get saved in that seven-year time frame than all of history combined. But those are the people that rejected the first light. Amen? Glory to God. We have a whole lot to get ready for. Amen? A whole lot. You want to come? Praise the Lord. Let's give God glory. Hallelujah. Now, it's just like anything. It's like when uh, I bought Anna this, that red car of hers. I never saw that car before, honestly. Never, ever saw that infinity. I just saw it that day. But after I bought it, oh, you stand up here saying, after I bought it, I see it everywhere now. I mean, I was, oh, that's, like, that's Anna's car. That's Anna's car. And I promise you, I never recognized that car going down the road before. Not red, not white, not blue, and I see it all the time now. Why? My radar got tuned into it. My frequency got tuned into it. I was aware. My awareness got tuned in to that particular vehicle. That's the same way as with the kingdom. What's going to happen? That's the same way the word. See, if you read the word in the light of the right hand of God, you see the right hand of God everywhere. Amen? If you read the John and understand the mysteries of God and the love of the Father, you start seeing it everywhere. Now you're going to start reading the Word and seeing the light. Isn't that awesome? Ooh. I just wanted to say that um, light has to do with the right hand of God because we are the Benjamin tribe. We're called sons of God's right hand, and the Benjamites were called the light-bearing tribe. They were called to give light to Judah, to the king, 
They were the light-bearing tribe, and all the disciples were Benjamites. Now, it says that we are sons of the light. We are sons of the day. We are sons of the light. 22 is the number of which is called um, sons of light. And so the end time, the manifested sons of God are sons of light. And the sons of light bring the truth and the revelation about the king and the kingdom. And that's who we are. So we are moving into our identity. We're moving into sonship. When we move into light, we're moving into who God called us to be so the crowning of the church can come. And there was also 22 bowls on top of the lampstand in the tabernacle. And so we're, we're flowing into, moving into our next step of what God has called us to be. Amen. Well, she's just talking. I'm just getting downloads for Sunday. <laughs> Y'all don't mind me. Just Chris, let's, let's, let's all stand. Hallelujah. I got to capture all this because it's, I'm getting downloads. Wow. This has been around for a while, this operation. It's just, it's just getting ready for us, our final light. Isn't this good? Oh, you have a right to go in there and say, Father, you are the Father of lights. Every good gift comes from you. Flood me with the operation of light. Fill me. Show me the way you showed the sun. Listen, don't you understand that everything the Lord operated in, he wanted to give you. He showed you how we can operate. And he's going to do this in the last day with the Father's ministry. Isn't that awesome? Praise the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, the revealer of the Father. You're the revealer of his love. Now you're going to open and reveal him in light. Ooh. Openly reveal the light. I want the light. I want the operation of light. I want to dwell in the light. I want all the darkness to flee and run. I wanted to run. I wanted to run. Whew. Man, I'm just seeing the transfiguration of the church. As the Lord was transfigured in light. Moses saw in. And he was come out and he shone with the light of heaven. He saw the Father's light. Even under the law, he saw the Father's light. And he come out and his face was shining with the Father's light. Whew. It's the glory realm. It's the realm of light and glory. It's the realm of the restoration. I hear the Spirit of the Lord of the Shekinah glory. The visible manifestation of the Father's light. That is what the Shekinah glory is. The visible manifestation of Moses' face was lit up. His countenance was lit up. Lit up. Say lit up. Whew. Whew. You can feel the door opening. He's setting before us an open door to have our lamp stand lit in this last hour. He's ready to light the lampstand. Glory to God.